for Apollo 13, I was the lead retro, which meant I was responsible for the other two retros that worked on the mission. And the retro fire officer's job is to always make sure there is a way to get back home, a path to get back home, some sort of maneuver calculations. So what the FIDO was worried about the outbound trajectory, the retro was always had a series of maneuvers that would bring the vehicle back to Earth. And we did that for not only abort situations from liftoff, but also through the normal end of mission, we would compute the maneuvers to bring the vehicle back. My wife uh, heard the accident about the accident on the news, and I had already gone to bed. She came and woke me up and uh, said, uh, they've had a problem at, at work. I got up and I grabbed some clothes and I came on out here to the control center. Uh, and I actually stayed in the dorm here at the control center, which they had a flight controller dorm at that time. Well, when I walked in, of course, there was a lot of people milling around trying to figure out what was going on because they still hadn't figured out whether or not we, uh, what the problem was, whether the limb would be uh, what we had to stay in or we could still save the CSM or what. So there was a lot of, uh, of activity and, and, and motion. And there's some people who were really nervous, uh, but then most everybody was just trying to get their job done and come up with a plan that would get us back on some sort of a stable uh, position. When our direct abort is when you're on the way out to the moon is you turn the vehicle completely around and you fire straight back at the earth and you come back to the earth immediately. You do not go around the moon. Uh, when I saw the situation, I ruled out almost immediately the fact of doing a direct abort. There was several reasons for that. One of them was I was really uncertain as to how good the command service module propulsion system was after the explosion. Uh, we would have had to jettison the limb, which we certainly didn't want to do because we were going to use it for a lifeboat and do any other uh, further maneuvers if we if we needed to do those. Uh, also, the maneuver was about 6,000 feet per second, which is a very, very large maneuver. If it would have shut down early, we would have been in a very bad posture. So uh, the, the wrong thing to do was do a direct report. The right thing to do was to get on a free return uh, coming around the moon, and then when we got around the other side of the moon, started back, speed the trajectory up, and get back a little bit quicker. Uh, my immediate concern was, when I got back here to work, was what are we going to do with the trajectory? We needed to get back on a free return trajectory, which we were not on. And let me tell you what that means. After TLI, we, uh, about 30 hours after launch, we did a maneuver to get on a, what we called a hybrid trajectory. Now, prior to that, our closest approach to the moon would be uh, 200 miles. We'd fly around the moon in a figure eight and come back to the Earth. But as it turns out, when we did this hybrid maneuver, we put ourselves in a posture to do a more efficient lunar landing and allow us to get to Frau Maurer, whereas we'd fly within 60 miles of the moon, but our return trajectory was within only 40,000 miles of the Earth. So we were not coming home. And I really wanted to get us on a return trajectory as soon as possible. I didn't know if anything else that could go wrong, and I didn't know if, uh, uh, if, if we'd have much fuel, to how much fuel we'd have to burn. So by doing this, we used a, a, a cheap method to get back to the a free return trajectory. Now, the pure free return trajectory brought us back to Africa. And with just a little bit of more delta V, we were, which is a more thrust, we got back to the Indian Ocean. So our, my first goal was to get us back on a trajectory to the Indian Ocean. After PC plus two, of course, we were tracking with radar. Uh, when you're real close to the moon, the trajectory is arcing quite a bit. When you're real close to the Earth, the trajectory is arcing quite a bit. So it doesn't take as much radar tracking to see changes in the tra trajectory. Well, after PC plus two, we were coming almost straight back. And after a while, we noticed that the trajectory seemed to be getting shallower and shallower and shallower to the point where we were concerned about we would, we would miss the atmosphere and skip out. Uh, it could have gone the other way. It could have gotten steeper and steeper and steeper. It just happened it was getting shallower. We really didn't understand what was happening. We knew there must be some thrusting force somewhere, but we could not pin down where it was.